We are honored to be joined by Mish Pal, Miami safety. You may have last seen him starting for Washington in the national championship game, but now Mish is starting for the Hurricanes, a spring game on Saturday. Mish, how has it been adjusting to, to new team, new coaching staff, new everything? It's been great. It's been, it's been really smooth, honestly. You know, the coaches, you know, they did you know, a great job of, you know, once I committed, getting me down here and making the process very smooth. And the locker room is, you know, just full of you know people laughing and joking as, as well as the serious side. But everyone was just really welcoming of me. And, you know, I was welcoming of them as well. So it's been, it's been really smooth. So how hard was the decision to, to leave Seattle? I realize, obviously, uh, Coach DeBoer was, was leaving for, for Tuscaloosa, but uh, Seattle's home for you. And, and you'd been at Washington for, for four years. I would say it was not – it was probably the biggest decision I made, probably either that or walking on. But mm -hmm. I would say that, you know, this felt like a place for me, especially being here and, you know, being on the visit. Um, they just did a great job of, you know, establishing that, like, how I would play on the field and where they see me at and understanding that family part was a big thing for me. And, you know, th this coaching staff and this whole, like, facility and all the staff around is like a family. So, you know, it doesn't feel too far away from home. So I imagine Coach Cristobal was was somewhat familiar with you having having coached at Oregon. So they, they, they were playing you guys every year. But what what's it been like, you know, getting together with these new teammates who who's kind of, who's really impressed you that you've gotten to play alongside that you've had to, to cover that you've had to play against on the other side of the ball uh yeah so i would say yeah me we play a few times uh <laughs> coach this ball I, I don't think i ever beat him but uh one thing i'll say about him is that was a team that we, we always had to play oregon we were like okay like this is a team that's a machine and they're disciplined they're physical so that's one thing that I was thinking about when, you know, coming here, knowing the type of coach that Coach Cristobal was and the players he produced. I'll probably say who's impressed me the most or who just impressed me, just a couple of names. Uh, Miles Mu Young, uh, defensive back, he's been really good. Um, Wes, Popo, uh, you know, everybody knows Ruben Bain. You know, he's also oh, yeah. uh, Jaden Harris. Um, these guys are that are pretty young. They're going to their third year. Uh, I think Bain's going to his second year. And, for them to be playing like they're veterans already, you know, is really impressive. And that's something that, you know, it took me a while to get to. And, you know, I've been going against Xavier a lot. You know, that's someone who uh, I probably go against every single day, the most matchup with him mostly throughout practice. And, you know, you know, there's a reason why, you know, he was, you know, all ACC and, you know, he broke the record last year, you know, it just goes into his work ethic. And, you know, I'm just grateful to be able to go against, you know, a type of caliber receiver with a quarterback like that, you know, every day in practice probably won't get any harder than games. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you you understand that experience very well, given who you, Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, with, with Michael Penix Jr. throwing them the ball last year. Like, right. How how hard were practices for you guys in the secondary dealing with those guys? Uh, it's just, you know, when you're going against elite talent, you know, it feels how it is now. You know, it, every day is like a game here. You know, going against Cam, Jacoby, um, like X and Zay Horton, you know, those guys, and even Elijah Arroyo, that's a different – you know, animal right there. It just feels like a game every time. And if you choose not to bring your A game that day, like it, it's going to be a long day for you. So that's what happens when you got to go against elite talent every day. So you had to play against Cam in the Apple Cup a couple times. What's, what's it like teaming up now? Uh, it's nice. It's nice. Whenever we played him, we were just like, okay, this is the quarterback that's really good. Uh, he's an elite quarterback. We always saw him as that way. And we knew that we had to bring our A game to be able to, you know, you know, contain him and, you know, slow him down. You know, every day I do remind him that he's yet to beat me like in anything when it comes to football. So <laughs> that's one thing that I always make sure I get in every day that you know he, he's on two against me. Well, he he can't actually improve that record until right. you guys are in the league and hopefully, you know, you're on different teams because right now every win for him is a win for you, too. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of like the all time winner when it comes to that. So that's something that they've him a bit. <laughs> Your your journey is is pretty incredible. So you you walked on at Washington. Uh, what were your other options? And and I, I will point out that your mom has a master's degree from Columbia, and your dad has an MBA from Harvard. So uh, what what were the other options coming out of high school? Um, I had a few FCS offers, like from the Big Sky, and then you know like the Ivy League schools. But 
those were really all the offers I really had. Um, and um, UW just being a hometown kid, and um, that was probably the only like Power Five that offer that I got that was a walk on spot. Like I didn't have any other Power Five offers. So how, how was it difficult to to choose between you know you you've got these Ivy League schools coming mm -hmm. after you, and you've got parents who went to Ivy League schools who were very successful. Right. Uh, and then you decide to walk on where, you know, there's no guarantee of, of anything. Right. I would say for me, it wasn't that difficult. I think for my parents, they were a bit, you know, knowing, you know, how the Ivy Leagues are and uh, the whole idea that, you know, four years of your time at the Ivy Leagues are like set you up for 40 years. I think that's something that they were really focused on. But, you know, I wanted the best of both worlds, you know, getting my degree from Foster School of Business. That's, you know, a top business school in the country and then also playing top, you know, top 10 football, top five football every year was something that I just wanted to live the best of both worlds. So the idea, it was never like in question, you know, once I got that um, uh, preferred walk on, I was like, yeah, this is the opportunity I'm going to take. And then, you know, it was obviously ups and downs. Uh, mm -hmm. Coach Lake gets let go. Kalen DeBoer comes in. D could you guys tell kind of right away that, that the culture was changing or, or that, that, it was going to be different? I would say a little bit. You know, we knew we had a bunch of guys. We knew we had a bunch of dudes. You know, similar to this team, you know, knowing that we have a bunch of, you know, athletes and guys that can, you know, get drafted highly and we have elite talent. I think that we could feel it, but it was more of like the right coaching staff, you know, getting their hands on us and, you know, making sure that we stay locked in and disciplined. Because um, that first year, 2022, uh, a lot of the players, except for me, about Mike and a few other guys, were already from the old uh, staff. So we were already, mm -hmm. we, um, we felt like we were we were good. And and what's it been like taking what you learned in Seattle and, and bringing it to Miami? It's it, it's interesting now in this transfer portal era because like you've got what you learned in Seattle. Cam Ward has what he learned in Pullman, and then right. you've got the guys who who've been with Coach Cristobal at Miami. And right. it kind of all blends together. Right. I would say, you know, there's actually, you know, I think my experience is a big thing, you know, just being, you know, playing a lot of snaps and, you know, being around guys uh, before me, like Trey McDuffie, Kyler Gordon, um, Elijah Molden, just a few guys that, you know, really are, you know, playing well in the NFL right now. And, you know, they always can go to them for advice. So just how they pass it on to me, you know, passing it on to, you know, these DBs here and, you know, there's also like a lot of similarities, you know, being on elite team, just like the culture and the discipline and just the drive that, you know, we have here, you know, are just like similar things that we had at Washington. So that was like really a big reason why I, I even came here just because I could feel that same, you know, energy that, you know, it's we're, we're going for the big one. So what is the biggest difference in living in Seattle and living in Coral Gables? I would say, I mean, obviously the weather. That's one thing that I'm, you know, finally getting adjusted to. It's it's, it's hot here every day. Like yeah. 87 to me is like 95 because that's how hot it gets in Seattle. That's a nice summer day. So I keep hearing about this weather in the summertime. You know, I'm a bit skeptical of it because people keep saying it gets real bad. So I would say the weather. And then I would probably say just there's a lot of different food options here like, there's a lot of different like food items that you can get in seattle it's a little more not as many like pop-up shots or like food truck it's more of just kind of like common you know businesses or food places so those are probably the two biggest things has coach cristobal interview introduced you to cuban food yet uh he's told me about it i've yet to try it but he all oh, he about the pizza spot so i've been going there you you got to get yourself out to calle ocho and uh just listen the, the easiest way to do it, the classic like plate, the, the, the best plate you're going to get is just the roast pork with the, with the fried sweet plantains, the maduros, and then the Moro rice. Moro rice is rice with beans good. cooked that, in bacon grease. That sounds really good. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they don't mess around. And their coffee is awesome, too. The Cuban, Cuban oh. coffee is incredible. So... Yeah, that's it, it is it is what the heat though I will tell you is not as bad as they're making it out to be. You chose wisely. I, I grew up in the state of Florida in, at various in various different places. Uh you guys have a little breeze off the water where you right, are. Right, right, right. The the Gators and Seminoles don't get that. Oh, they're yeah. they're dealing with a lot worse. So. Straight country. 
<laughs> what and and so you've got like those are new rivalries to you and you got to play both those teams this year like do, does anybody tell you about how that works or is it is it just something that okay we'll, we'll get to that when we play them you know that's kind of the biggest thing you know we get to when we play you know just being from the west coast you know i've had you know my fair share of rivalries as well so you know i understand the how intense it gets but you know those are just games that you know we got we're going to be a, a lot different team and we're going to be you know one full style machine we got to play those guys so you know i'm not really thinking too much about them but i know that's a serious game i know the atmosphere i know how important you know those games are for sure i think it's program well, i was gonna say you're, you're around people still who who have experience with the the oregon washington rivalry have experience with the apple cup so they they know you've seen some yeah some right. hated rivals so right. th- how, how much fun is it learning new scheme new system new new people i would say it's i'm having a great time you know being with coach gidry and the whole defensive staff like these guys are just so dialed in and you know they're really energetic they bring it every day and you know they expect us you know to play at a a elite level at all times you know there's certain plays that we make out there that you know we're supposed to make you know there's certain plays that are like really like flashy plays as well and you know that's just because of the scheme and you know us trusting their coaching and it's just been great honestly you know this has been a great time i've enjoyed spring ball and you know i'm I'm excited for you know what to show you know you guys what our defense is going to be like all right, Mish, well, we can't wait to watch on Saturday in the spring game. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.